This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 27th day of January in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. Outlining several shortcomings of the PP Civic Administration since it took office, opposition leader Aubrey Norton this afternoon hammered the finance minister and the government over this year's national budget, which he said will have a negative impact on the lives of citizens, since there are insufficient measures to deal with the rising cost of living and high inflation. Mr. Speaker, we have outlined the weaknesses of this budget. We have pointed out that it does not deliver poverty alleviation measures. We've shown you that it has no cost of living. It has no cost of living, no measures to reduce cost of living. We have shown you that it has no measures to create employment. Mr. Speaker, we have shown you that it does not focus on the development of our people. We recommend to you that you borrow from our people-centered vision and bring a budget that allows our people to develop. The opposition leader also said there are also issues related to governance that must be addressed in the country. He said based on this year's budget, the government seems set to continue to ignore issues related to governance. Ghana today is marked by the absence of transparency and accountability. There's an unbelievable assault on democracy. For some reason, PPP seem to believe that democracy is only but elections. They do not believe that there are substantive elements of democracy governance issues in which they should follow Article 13 and be inclusive. They had the audacity to tell even civil society that they were not elected and therefore they won't have a seat. Mr. Norton told the National Assembly that a people-centered budget was needed and the government failed to deliver such a budget. This budget stifles the poor man. This budget kills initiative. It is for those reasons, Mr. Speaker, I can't afford to support this budget. However, if the government shows any responsibility and is prepared to be responsive to the concerns, we might very well reconsider our position. Norton highlighted government's failure to involve the opposition on key national issues, including issues related to electoral reform and the Elections Commission. He also made reference to the state of security in the country, saying that a professional police force is needed and none exists right now. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. And Office Max, we're all about customer satisfaction. Whether it's clothing and shoes for the ladies, gents, and kids, or for the latest electronics or hardware appliance, we're always thinking of satisfying you, our dear customers. Now you can shop online at www.giftlandofficemax.com or visit us at the Giftland Mall, where we're happy to serve each and every one of you.
at the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Get in the game with Buster. Win a full gaming setup. Xbox X. Gaming chair. Gaming speaker and headset. Or any of over 60 weekly prizes. Like Oculus Quest 2. Mini 2 drone. Nintendo Switch. And many more top gaming prizes. Check below for our details. Firing back at the opposition member of parliament, Walter Lawrence, who scolded the government on its management of the country's financial resources and its failure to implement appropriate measures to bring down the high inflation rate, Prime Minister Mark Phillips today told the National Assembly that after failing miserably to make good in its 2015 manifesto, the opposition is now coming to the House to lecture the government on economics when it is incapable, according to him, of doing such. The Prime Minister said while the APNU AFC is painting an image of doom and gloom, the records would show that Gallon's economy in 2022 grew by 62.3%, with a very strong expansion of 11.5% in non-oil real gross domestic product. APNU AFC Member of Parliament, Walter Lawrence, who took the podium ahead of the Prime Minister, had stated that poor management of the economy has led to the steep rise in inflation. Mr. Speaker, nothing has been more characteristic of the mismanagement of the economy than the steep rise in inflation over the past three years compared to the previous five years. Allow me to highlight, sir, in t between 2016 to 2019, the inflation rate was between 1.4% to 2.1%. During the years 2020 to 2022, we saw 0.9 to 7.2%. The minister tells us that in 2023, we will have a 3.8 station rate. Lawrence said while it is acknowledged that COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine disrupted the supply chain of goods and services and would have contributed to the rise in domestic inflation, an unappreciated a contributor is a massive increase in the money supply occasioned largely by the rapid expansion in public expenditure. It was pointed out too that the central government's deficit totaled $155.2 billion in 2022 compared to $29.9 billion in 2019, while expenditure jumped to $981.9 billion in 2023 compared to $291.6 billion in 2019. But the Prime Minister said MP Lawrence demonstrated an impressive display of lack of understanding of the macroeconomic concepts. He said contrary to the claims laid at the feet of the government by the opposition member, it is public knowledge that the COVID-19 pandemic and the supply chain challenges led to the persistent rise in the cost of living and inflation globally. We're not only building roads because she seems to feel it's only roads. We're not only building schools, hospitals and have an expansive housing project, we are building a brand new bridge across the Demerara River. We are constructing a power plant, a gas power plant, and a natural gas liquid plant as part of the gas to energy project. That takes tremendous amount of money. And taking a hit at APNU AFC Member of Parliament Kathy Hughes, the Prime Minister said while the opposition MP lobbied for the government to cut tuition fees at the University of Guyana by 15%, it was under the coalition government that the tertiary institution increased its fees by 35%. Mr. Speaker, earlier, we were assaulted by the Honorable Kathy Hughes today in this noble house. She started by asking for 15% reduction in University of Guyana fees. When you were parked, you, Honorable Katius, were a minister in the cabinet that rose the fees 
or raise the fees by 35% during your tenure. You were part of that decision. All are involved, all are consumed on the other side. The Prime Minister boasted that while the APNU AFC failed to liberalize the telecommunications sector, returning the television station and to the people of the town, and establish a national youth council among others, the government have done all of that and much more since taking office in 2020. The people of Linden are still without their TV station. Join your list parliamentary representative and leader of the Liberty and Justice Party, Lennox Schumann, today offered his unwavering support for the government's $781.9 billion budget. The opposition member of the National Assembly said the budget sets the tone for this year to be an extremely good year for the people of Guyana. He attacked the APNU AFC opposition members over their contributions to the budget debate. But I would have thought that a party that would have exhausted every single constitutional means to hold on to power, would have educated themselves and read the constitution and know what their obligations are as written in this book. And I will say that I am so sadly disappointed. On day one, our very first speaker came into this house and started speaking about an apartheid state, about inherent racism, racist policies, and all of these things. And singling out APNU AFC Member of Parliament Dawn Hastings Williams, who during her budget presentation spoke about the 24-year legal battle regarding indigenous lands in Region 7, Schumann, who is also the Deputy Speaker, contended that the coalition government did everything within its power to frustrate the same process. And taking credit for the delivery of the ruling, the Deputy Speaker said it was because of his efforts and that of others in the government and justice system that the HO dispute was brought to an end. And I am happy to say, Mr. Speaker, that it is because of a constant dialogue between myself and the Attorney General and the justice system, I don't want to name the specific manage to work, work our way through and thus the people finally got the ruling, finally got a written ruling. It is with the support of the Honorable Attorney General. So you cannot come to this podium and lament how great you were in office when in fact you did absolutely nothing, you did everything to frustrate the system. The LJP MP also told the National Assembly that while the APNU AFC members of parliament have spoken about government having its knees on the necks of indigenous people, it is the very same coalition that's discriminated against him, while he served as the vice president of the National Tushaus Council and sought to dictate the operations of that council. He also accused the APNU AFC of stalling the process of issuing land titles while in office. According to him, instead of issuing land titles, the coalition revoked a land title from an indigenous village in Region 9. Speaking to his contributions to the development of indigenous people, the Join the List Party representative said it is because of his hard work and his dedication that indigenous people have greater access to education, including tertiary education. is now open to serve your everyday wants and needs. Our experienced pharmacists will help you feel your best, ensuring you bring home everything you need. We guarantee you will come back for everything you want. Our team is friendly. Our shelves are stocked and ready. Hassle-free shopping for your busy life. And some Mini Mart, everyday shopping made easy. From our home to yours. Anson Mini Mart is now open to serve you. Call 220-0505 or check out our Anson Macagayana Facebook page for more details.
The government of Guyana intends to push ahead with its housing program to make home ownership easier for its citizens. That's according to the Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll. During his contribution to the budget debates, Minister Kroll said, while the government is aware that it is difficult for some citizens to own their own homes due to financial and other constraints, the government has been working to provide alternative housing solutions and house loss at reduced prices. We have allocated, as I just said, over 20,500 house lots. We have established over 50 new housing areas. We have upgraded and installed infrastructure in 43 existing housing areas. And so in reference to 22, a few minutes ago, Mr. Speaker, that's over five years duration, and I challenge that figure, where I'm speaking here of under two years. We have built 827 low, moderate, high income houses, young professionals. A Florida 527 are in various stages of construction. The investment cost for these houses saw an injection of $7 billion. On the issue of squatting, the minister said the government has been able to reduce squatter settlements from 19 to 13 and has regularized a number of areas by giving persons titles to the lands they're occupying. And also, we have addressed the bugbear issue of regularizing a number of old squatter settlements and resolving the issue of squatters who occupy lands that are on government reserves, whether it is to be used for sea defense where it is be used for drainage, where it is used for expansion of road networking or other similar national projects. He noted the issue of squatting appears to be an unending one, but the government, he said, intends to work with illegal settlers to reach a suitable solution. We are not in the business of disenfranchising, disenfranchising citizens. We are in the business of ensuring that every citizen has an opportunity to own their own home. But nor did we, in the case of Caneview, decided overnight that those squatters had to be relocated. You will recall, Mr. Speaker, in the very previous budget debate right here, last year, 2022, during my speech, I provided clear information on this matter. Just recently, the ministry came under fire for the bulldozing of houses in the Mucka Caneview area after serving notice on squatters to leave. While some squatters left, others who were pushing for a better resettlement offer found themselves being displaced after their homes were completely flattened. The housing ministry was allocated more than $54 billion in this year's budget to develop new and existing housing schemes. Speaker of the National Assembly, Manzo Nadir, has once again been accused of being biased against the opposition and unfair in his treatment of opposition members in the National Assembly. In a statement this morning, Opposition Chief Whip Christopher Jones pointed to the Speaker interrupting the presentation of Opposition Member Sherrod Duncan over his use of an unparliamentary language when he quoted former U.S. President Barack Obama and the word corruption was contained in the quote. The Speaker said corruption is an unparliamentary word. Jones said the Speaker made no interruption and issued no warning when Culture Minister Charles Ramson Jr. in his presentation used the word fool while quoting a writer and making reference to the opposition. Jones said there is a clear pattern of biased behavior from the Speaker that continues. He said throughout the debates, the Speaker continued to show his true colors. In response to the press statement issued by the opposition chief whip, Speaker Manzo Nadir said he has been trying his best to ensure fairness in the Assembly. And if his attempts to be fair is seen as him being biased against one side, then so be it. And as we were listening to the presentation, the Honorable Chief Whip from the opposition was at it again. I am trying my best to ensure that we keep fairness between the two sides in the presentation of their speeches. Since his assumption to the office of the Speaker, Mr. Nadir has been accused of sidelining and silencing the opposition with a number of his proposed motions being rejected or continuously deferred.
Nadir once headed the United Force, but ditched that party when he was offered a government minister position under a former PP civic government. Since then, he has maintained close ties with the PPP and has even campaigned openly for the PPP in past elections. The party he once headed the United Force has dwindled into a shell of his former self. The Demerara Harbour Bridge management has found itself apologizing over an F-bomb notice that greeted commuters on Thursday night. The notice scroll at the bridge's entry triggered a full investigation and has left the bridge's management embarrassed over the breach. An official close to the bridge's management said it is suspected that the system might have been hacked with some inside help, but no suspect has been identified. In a statement this morning, the bridge company said it views the breach as an attack on the bridge and the government of Guyana. The statement said the profane message that was broadcast via the digital messaging board was perpetrated with ill intent by an unknown person or persons to cast a shadow of doubt over the corporation and its hard-working staff. The bridge company said it will not take the issue lightly. An investigation to determine how the breach took place and the identity of the suspect or suspects is on the way. Anson Mini Mart is now open to serve your everyday wants and needs. Our experienced pharmacists will help you feel your best, ensuring you bring home everything you need. We guarantee you will come back for everything you want. Our team is friendly. Our shelves are stocked and ready. Hassle-free shopping for your busy life. Anson Mini Mart, everyday shopping made easy. From our home to yours. Anson Mini Mart is now open to serve you. Call 220-0505 or check out our Anson Macaguayana Facebook page for more details. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Get in the game with Buster. Win a full gaming setup. Xbox X, gaming chair, gaming speaker and headset. Or any of over 60 weekly prizes. Like Oculus Quest 2, Mini 2 Drone, Nintendo Switch and many more top gaming prizes. Check below for Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Across the region tonight, rebel police officers rioted in Haiti's capital of Port-au-Prince on Thursday in protest at the killing of more than a dozen colleagues by criminal gangs. The rioting officers blamed the government for not taking action. More than 100 demonstrators blocked streets, burned tires, broke security cameras and damaged vehicles. The media said several officers broke through the gates of the Prime Minister's residence and attempted to enter Haiti's international airport. The National Union of Haitian Police Officers said 14 men have been killed since the start of the year in various gang-related attacks on police stations. Seven officers were killed in shootouts this week alone, according to the Haitian National Police. Scores of civilians and angry police officers took to the streets in Port-au-Prince to denounce the violence following the murder of two officers inside a police station in a town in northern Haiti and the execution-style killing of four more on the street outside. 
the Minister of Health in the Bahamas, Dr. Michael Darville, led a team of 11 healthcare workers to Machutan earlier this week to conduct health assessments and surveillance checks on a group of almost 400 undocumented migrants from Haiti and Cuba. The Health and Wellness Minister was accompanied by a team that comprised of disease surveillance doctors and nurses, a physician manager and public health manager, and two engineers. The underground assessment is in keeping with established international best practices related to the safeguarding and preserving of the health of migrants and the possible spread of infectious diseases. A field hospital has been erected to accommodate the undocumented migrants. The field hospital was donated by the U.S. government. And finally tonight, international news. Seven people were shot dead at a synagogue in East Jerusalem, with at least three others injured. The incident took place in the city's Nevi Yaqub neighborhood at around 8.15 in the evening. Police described the attacker as a terrorist and said he had been neutralized. The U.S. has condemned the attack. Several other countries have also expressed their concern, including the U.K. and Australia. The media in Israel reported that the attacker was killed by security forces as he was fleeing the scene. Tensions have been high since nine Palestinians, both militants and civilians, were killed during an Israeli military raid in Jenin in the occupied West Bank on Thursday. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.